Here with promoter Tom Loeffler. Now, Tom, Roman Gonzalez will carry out his own main event here at the Forum in Inglewood. However, he will be the co-feature to Gennady Golovkin versus Kell Brook on HBO. We have a split site. It's great for the fans because I'm going to be able to see Roman Gonzalez, <laughs> and I'm also going to be able to see Gennady on television. Talk to us about the event. You know, th this really turned out to be a great event. I've been pushing HBO uh, pretty hard uh, after uh, Chocotito was a co-feature three times mm -hmm. on HBO, and each time, you know, really proving that he deserves, uh, you know, to be at the top of the pound for pound list, and. Um, you know when when it came about like who we're gonna work on as far as uh, his opponent and what would justify being a main event you know that's when uh, Mr. Honda had uh, talked to uh, Chocotito and his manager Carlos Blandon and said look we can make the fight with, uh, with uh, Quadros undefeated 115 pound champion moving up in weight and it's a historic move for Chocotito's fourth division mm -hmm. um, and whenever you have two undefeated fighters fighting each other look you, you got uh, Triple G and Kell Brook are both undefeated champions. They don't know how to lose. All four of those guys don't know how to lose. Exactly. And then you throw in on the triple header a fight like Kamagai versus uh, Soto Karas, like two warriors, you know, who just had a who just had a uh, uh, a draw, you know, in a war. I mean, that's uh, that's going to be a, a treat for the fans. Well, you can't argue with that triple header. Let, let's talk about fighters moving up in weight. Uh, Gonzalez, he's moving up only three pounds. Uh, you got Kell Brook, who's moving up 13 pounds. Right. I mean, historically, fighters in the past have always, and will continue, moving up in weight in order to accomplish something in boxing that most fighters don't, is taking titles in other weight classes, becoming a two-division champion, a three-division champion. Sure. Why is it so hard for fight fans to understand a welterweight champion wanting to go up and wait and win a middleweight crown. It's been done before. Well, it's been done before, and it's been done successfully. Some of the greatest fights in history, you know, with Ray Leonard moving up and beating uh, beating Hagler. Look, I used to work with Shane Mosley, and, and Shane moved up from lightweight to welterweight. That's exactly. 12 pounds. Exactly. And, and he was successful at, at Staples Center. So, uh, look, Adrian Broner moved up from 135 to 147 and uh and and was able to successfully beat uh to beat Pauly. so you know it, it's uh, i don't know why <laughs> it seems like gennady gets some resistance but mm -hmm. when we go down the list and and uh when uh when we exhaust you know all the viable options look it's a great fight you know kel Brook has the same struggles he can't get the big names at, at welterweight you know eddie has explained you know he tried to make a number of big fights try to get you know other champions to go to the england and fight him so Gennady's going to the UK. I think it, it balances out quite a bit. You know, sure, Gennady, you know, Kell Brook's moving up in weight. But Gennady's going over to his, his home country and fighting over there. That gives Kell a big, uh, you know, home hometown advantage, you know, with the fans, you know, with the, the travel, with the, the time difference. So, you know, Gennady's the type of guy, he's a true world champion. He doesn't care where he fights. He doesn't care who he fights. Um, we try to make the deals that, that uh, <laughs> make sense for the opponents to get in the ring with them. And, and uh, look, it's just my job to make the fights with the guys who actually sign the contract. Mm. Um, I, you know, I don't want to sit there and badmouth other fighters. You know, it's, it's their choice uh, not to get in the ring with Gennady. But the, the frustrating part, or maybe the interesting part, is when, when uh, fighters actually get vocal and say, we'll fight them. And then when it comes to signing a contract, it, it doesn't happen. Or when we announce a fight, and then uh, either we get offers or we get other fighters like calling them out when there's like it's safe not to fight them. So who knows? I mean, it's just it's one of those things. But we just have to, look, you know, in, in in a four year time period since he made his HBO debut, uh, Gennady's become one of the most marketable fighters in the sport of boxing. This will be his third sold out arena in a row, fourth uh, overall sold out arena, and and uh, when. Uh, in, in two con in two countries, uh, three different cities. You know, when you have that type of international popularity, mm -hmm. you know, we just uh, continue to try to build this career with every fight. Tom, let me ask you a question here. Let's take Gennady Golovkin out of the equation. He is not fighting Kell Brook. Okay. Kell Brook decides that he wants to move up in weight and fight B.J. Saunders. I think we, we, you and I, would be having a completely <laughs> different conversation, and I don't think fight fans would be so eager to be putting down that fight. If he was fighting B.J. Saunders, right. I don't think 
P.J. Saunders be an out- or I don't think be an outcry. or Denny Jacobs. I mean, all of those guys. I really don't believe it would be an outcry, those, but since Gennady those, is a puncher and a monster, suddenly it's a mismatch. Look, when you have 22 knockouts in a row, it makes uh, people a little bit hesitant to get in the ring with Gennady. I mean, Gennady is knocking out guys that have never been knocked out in their career. So I, I can understand the hesitation for, for some of the some of the people not to get in the ring with them, but... Look, that, that's why we just have to give Kelbrook a lot of credit for, uh, for stepping up, taking this fight, moving up in weight. And it, look, it's the biggest fight, clearly the biggest fight in Kel's career. It's uh, turning out to be the most talked about fight <laughs> this year for the sport of boxing uh, internationally. It's, uh, it's a tremendous event, and I think it's, uh, it's, it's going to prove to be a, a tremendous event in the U.K. and uh, on HBO over here in the States. Well, let's not forget... There was a time where Gennady Golovkin, uh, Abel Sanchez, yourself, all decided that he would move up to 168 pounds and fight Chavez. Right. That fight did not happen. Uh, Carl Frotch was in the running for a fight right. in Vegas. Yeah. He says Gennady's too small. Not, not even in Vegas, he will so. beat him. Yeah. Uh, it's an easy fight. Yeah. I don't understand why Frotch wouldn't take the fight. And then you have Floyd Mayweather, who saw um, some tape on Gennady and says, uh, easy work all day. No, These no, fighters no love to talk. Yeah but they don't put up the fight. Yeah. Why is that? Well, we, we, we tried hard to make the, uh, the Chavez fight. At that point of Gennady's career, if we could have gotten the Chavez fight, that would have been a huge statement for Gennady. If we could have gotten the Carl Froch fight, you know, not only in Vegas, but we could have done that fight. I told Eddie we could have done that fight over in the UK. If, if Carl Froch can sell out Wembley Stadium fighting Char- uh, George Groves. 80,000 fans. <clears throat> Yeah. Look what look what would have happened if he would have fought uh, Triple G. And I remember Carl tweeting out photos of he's too big and too strong for Gennady. And I, said, I told Eddie, well, then it should be easy to make the fight. fight. But then he didn't fight. Uh, he didn't fight uh, after that. I don't know. Eddie says he keeps staying in shape, and who knows if he's going to fight again or not. But look, it's uh, you know all I can do is try to make those type of fights. And uh, if I would have been able to make a fight like that, it would have put Gennady even to a higher level mm-hmm. than he is right now and and since those fights weren't makeable I know look I know Bob Arum tried very hard to make the Chavez fight that would have been a monster in that at that point on pay-per-view and you know with Chavez's fan base Gennady's fan base that would have been a, a terrific event that was uh, uh, two years ago we were trying to make that fight but again you can't force fights to happen if uh, both fighters don't want to fight um Cal Brook wanted to fight, and we can make that fight in the same exact terms that the fight was offered to uh, Eubank. We were able to make the fight with uh, with Cal Brook, so it shows it wasn't the offer; it was uh, just uh, the willingness of uh, of uh, Cal to accept the deal. Canelo Alvarez is fighting Liam Smith for the WBO uh, Junior Middleweight Championship of the World. However, he's still the Ring Magazine Middleweight Champion. What constitutes that? I mean, he should be <laughs> stripped away, correct? It, Gennady Golovkin should be the middleweight champ. Yeah, that would be my position. I, I, you know, we always uh, push to have Gennady as, you know, considered the lineal middleweight champion now. Since I think it, there's no argument that he's the best middleweight champion, but you know, it is what it is. I mean, he wants to unify all the belts. He's got four right now. He's missing the WBO title. So, you know, if we can't get uh, Billy Joe Saunders in the ring, you know, we're just going to keep going and going. And then until it gets to a point where, where you know, that, that look, this is, a, this is a marathon for Gennady. It's not a sprint. Mm-hmm. So I, I, I firmly believe he'll be able to unify all, all the titles. And, and uh, you know, after this event, if he's successful in London, then uh, we'll plan another event for him. Uh, uh, over here, you know, WBA is talking about uh, fighting uh, uh, Danny Jacobs. Love that. Fight. That's a great fight. That's a great fight. Jacobs had a look. First of all, he's he's a great representative for the sport of boxing. He had a tremendous uh, knockout over uh, Peter Quillen, who was also undefeated at the time. And uh, and uh, Danny is a likable guy. And so, if we could do uh, Triple G against Jacobs, that's a great matchup. Whether it happened, you know, only time will tell. But um, you know, we did the weight fight here at the Forum. That was his IBF mandatory. And then uh, if we do that fight uh, before the end of the year, it would be a, a tremendous event. One of my final questions, will we see knockout number 23? <laughs> That's 22 knockouts in a row so far, correct? 22 in a row. I, I don't think there's anyone uh, at 160 pounds or below or even 160. You know, people say, well, why don't you fight at 168? Look, I don't think anyone at 168 
we'll be able to go 12 rounds with with Gennady. They're just bigger guys, but that doesn't mean yeah. James DeGale, which durable. would be a good fight, I think. Sure, DeGale's a good fight. Baru Jackson 168. Look, there's there's a lot of great matchups. It's just a, a matter of, of putting the fights together. I mean, naturally, the more titles you have, the more mandatory obligations you have, and sometimes you can't put the fight together that, that you really want to put together. But that's part of the responsibility of, of, of being a world champion, a multiple title world champion. So. Um, we'll see how things go September 10th, and if, if everything goes the, the way for Triple G, then, you know, we'll, we'll, I'll be already planning the, the next fight after that. Tom, if uh, Gennady Golovkin gets that early stoppage, that early knockout, we all have that Triple G fever. Please bring him back in December. Bring him back in December. I'm looking forward to it. Thank you. Okay, thanks, Tom. Good luck to you. Okay. Thank you. All right.